Okay, so I'm on a different setup than I usually am for these recordings, so hopefully I can manage everything just fine with one screen. <laughs> I should be able to, um, but what we'll do today is kind of introduce you to your next big project assignment, which is due in about a month. Um, typically, if this is a class you've, you're retaking, um, typically, we do this project a little bit differently. We usually break it into three parts um, in which we start with the small building and then we add an extension to it and then we finalize everything with it. Um, because this class is completely online and remote, I have changed the assignment slightly to have less parts to it um, to hopefully make it a little less stressful of an assignment. But it is still a big one that is, is going to take Quite a bit of your time up so I recommend that you kind of chip away at it as you are going or working um, and with that what we'll do today is we'll just kind of look at what that assignment is I'll help or I'll give you some examples of how you would start off within the assignment and then you can work along with it and please um, I'm going to encourage you, and I even put it in here in the instructions, you are encouraged to send me along your progress. So feel free to attach the file to an email and say, hey, can you check it, make sure everything's all doing all right. Um, and I'll be happy to do so. It's literally what you're paying me for. Um, but we can also see here in the instructions too that, um, that you're going to be working on this kind of in parts. So the first part is we'll set up all of the different line work within the drawing, and then we'll add in blocks and different pieces of content. We'll start adding in the dimensions, and then we'll do what's called a plot, which is just the fancy word for printing in the drafting world. Um, there'll be lots, or not lots, but several videos related to working your way through this assignment, and then there's those files linked there to help you complete everything along with it. And it says here that you have 22 days, really, I guess you'll have 21 days because this won't be posted up on Azure Learn until like later tonight. But um, yeah, so you'll have a, a fair chunk of time, about seven weeks to get this completed. And I just really recommend you kind of chip away at it little by little. So the first thing we'll look through is just the assignment instructions, and then we'll come back to here to what this little DWT or template file is. Um, and also, I may I may pause this recording and realize that I made a mistake here in the instructions and fix that mistake. So the instructions on Azure Learn might not be exactly what I have on here. If that happens, I'll make sure to verbally let you guys know. But um, just because I have changed this assignment quite quite a bit since what I typically do, um, I might have missed something in the instructions. It's totally possible. Um, so we can see here it's due on the 29th. Um, very latest would be the 4th unless you email me with some issue or concern. I know things that things might pop up that you are not expecting to happen and if those are stopping you from getting your work done, please let me know. Um, um, so we'll use the information from class, the drawing template file provided in the assignment, and all of the referent drawings. Um, you'll submit your work as a DWG, which is the default file type for AutoCAD. And again, I'm going to ask for you to make sure or at least try to put your name in your file so that this way it makes it easier for me to kind of go through everything and grade it and figure out whose work is whose. Um, you don't necessarily need to add that DWG part to the file name, it's there by default. The one thing I'm, I'm gonna also recommend is, and here I can even show you, I'll go into kind of the settings in here, um, is when you upload your file and you rename it here, if you rename it this way, it actually deletes the file extension and makes it impossible to open. So rename your file in CAD, do not rename it in Azure Learn, because that'll make it impossible for me to 
open it and and that just generally won't be good. <laughs> um, so there are some notes within this file here, as well as just in the reference drawings I've provided. Um, and as it's saying here, like while it, everything I'm giving you is kind of helpful for how your drawing should look, the way I'm going to work through it in the demos is not necessarily the exact way you have to do it. Your measurement should be the same as mine, but the way I lay out my files, the if you're using the line tool and I'm using the polyline tool, that's not going to make a lick of difference. It's really, are you getting the same end result as me, but how we get there can be different. Um, and also that there will be additional instruction sheets. So I'll have instructions for printing. Um, I'll have more video demos going over this assignment. And there'll be some extra credit too that you can add into this assignment to help make up for points that you may have lost within the hand drawings or within the SketchUp or any of the progress assignments too. Um, but Again, as a note, those progress assignments you can make up at any time for full credit, those guided notes and other drawings. Um, so I encourage you to go and do those if you haven't, because that's 50% of your grade and there is no late penalty for doing those late. I'm just going to check on one thing. I just wanted to check I was recording. Otherwise, I was just talking to myself for like eight minutes. With... <laughs> and that would have not been great. Um, so notes on the drawing, everything should be in the appropriate layers and we'll look at that today with the layers and how to manage those and make sure that you're working in the right one using the correct scale, which, um, in both model space and paper space, which it's set by default in our template, but I'll show you just how to make sure that you're in the right scale. Um, study the drawings provided. Um, it says here solution guide. I'm going to change that. So I'm not going to pause right now, but I'll change that to just say the name of the two types of files um, that are in this assignment on as you learn. And also just to read the information carefully to, to make sure that you have everything set the way you need to. Um, and all of the dimensions are provided for the convention of wood frame buildings. And so that's, we're measuring to the face of the stud, not ex not the outside face of the building. We're measuring to the center of openings, um, things like that. Um, our different types of walls. So you can find a lot of this stuff also in the hand draw assign hand drawn assignment, because this is the same building. Um, but our exterior walls, remember that they're made out of several materials. So we have our siding, then our plywood sheathing, our wall stud, and our gypsum wall board. Um, in our hand drawing and our SketchUp assignment, we kind of ignored all of these materials and we really just focused on the overall um, width. In AutoCAD, we are going to be making sure that we draw each one of these materials or each one of these layers of the wall. Um, wall type B is not going to exist in our building because we aren't going to add an extension to it. So that's why I crossed it out. Um, and then our interior partition wall, our foundation wall, and just also keep in, we're going to also keep in mind that we have actual dimensions of materials versus nominal dimensions of materials. Um, our floor and our roof types as well, just kind of reviewing what those different materials are that make up our floor because our floor is not just one solid eight inch mass. It's made out of this plywood decking over floor joists. Then just a few notes related to the different view types you'll be completing. So I'm gonna recommend that you actually save doing this wall type one, like just kind of hold back on it and save it for a little bit later in the project, just cause I'll have a little secret to show you how you can get that one done a lot faster. Um, but the wall type is just referencing the different types of walls that are shown in our building. 
the foundation plan. So which drawing should you be looking at to help you complete it? As well as which layers should you be using? Which hatch pattern should you be using and at what scale? Same thing with the floor plan. Um, and the reason why I have this as a big blank here, it's because we're gonna be using several layers that start with a line um, to help us create our floor plan and also using different um, hatches. But I'm actually gonna take this part out because we actually aren't gonna be using a pattern hatch in the floor plan at all. Um, and anytime you see in my drawings, if you see four digit numbers that are near doors or windows, that's indicating the dimension in feet and inches. So for example, if, if you see something labeled with 30, 68, that means that it's three feet wide, six foot, eight inches tall. That's just how I'll tag doors and windows, um, in drawings. For your building section, so last time we did a transverse section, we cut through the smaller of the two. This time we're doing a longitudinal section for our building. Um, and I would also maybe hold off on this a little bit until we do the wall section part of, or the wall section demo and lecture in the course, just cause I can show you a little easier way to get that drawing done as well. Um, what hatches should you be using, um, and different dimensions of just, you know, where our finished grade line is, is our crawl space, indicating the framing components in the building, the elevations. So there's two elevations we'll be drawing. We'll be drawing a south elevation and this time the west elevation. So in your hand drawing, you did the east. This time we'll be doing the west. And of course adding in those or what those numbers mean and what hatching pattern should you be using as well as the angle and the scale of it. So what a lot of that is referring to, and I'll come back into the assignment as well, are these two reference drawings which will help you complete your drawings as well. So I'm just gonna download both of these and we'll look here first at this one. So this is just showing us layer wise what those drawings are gonna be looking like um, to help you understand the different colors that are associated with each one of the drawings. What the foundation plan is going to look like, the different annotations that should be included in it, which whoops, I deleted the 24 foot one here and didn't add it in. So I'm gonna have to go back and add it forgot to add my siding back in. I went and changed everything up. So I'll have to add a couple of different things in. So I'll redo this drawing, re-upload it so it'll look a little bit different in your version. What the floor plan will look like. And so this is the same as our hand drawing, um, but it's just gonna look a lot cleaner and nicer because we have the ability to just make all of our line work easy in CAD. Our section view, so like I said, this time we're cutting through trans um, longitudinally. So that's what this right here is referencing. And so we're cutting the building open straight through here, showing us this section view. There are some framing components that we're able to see in this section view as well. And then our elevations. And so these two drawings, or rather this set of drawings is really helpful for figuring out which layers should be used where. And then the other set of drawings is to kind of let you know what your final version is going to look like. And we'll go over setting it up on these sheets of paper once we get closer to the due date. I can't off the top of my head remember exactly when I have it in the schedule, but it's probably somewhere um, my guess is it's this week of the 22nd and 24th, but I could be mistaken. Um, and these drawings are 
essentially the same thing, but this is then using a color plot table. So all of those different colors, all of these different layers in here, which, whoops, excuse me, each one of these layers gets coded to print with a different line weight. So therefore, in our floor plan, our yellow lines get printed a lot thicker, then our gray lines get printed a lot thinner, our cyan lines for our dimensions. So everything has a different code of how it gets printed with which line weight. And so that's why using our different colors are really important. I can see here I will have even more annotations I forgot to get out. I just forgot a whole bunch of stuff when I was redoing these drawings. Um, what our elevations look like, our section view, our wall types. And so it just will kind of help you a little bit, maybe a little bit more with the annotations, but you'll really be referring to these drawings for the most work or the most kind of guidance for your assignment. And I would even recommend printing out a copy of this packet. That way you can just kind of have it to reference rather than having to go back and forth, back and forth. I do know a lot of students that will work in CAD like this. So they'll, if I can drag this over, and drag that down is they'll try to work in AutoCAD like this with AutoCAD kind of small and then next to their, their drawing. This is something you definitely can do, and especially if you only have one screen. It might be one screen and you don't have a printer around. It might be the best way for you to go. Um, I really don't like working like this. Right now I have a pretty big screen that I'm dealing with, so I can work with this okay. I don't like how it condenses everything up here, um, but I know not everyone has two screens, not everyone has a printer. Um, if you're working on a laptop screen, you've got a really already condensed kind of workspace to deal with screen real estate wise, so maybe don't do it this way, but ultimately I'm not there with you and I can't hold your hand through it, so that's so weird that those were on the printed sheets because I, I did delete them. I knew I did. How'd they show up on my printed sheets? Unless these are old ones. Curious. Anywho, I won't I won't dwell on it too much. I'll just I'll worry about it later. Um so to start your drawing with, you're going to start with this template file here. And so I'm actually going to just completely close out of my drawing. I'll save my changes so far. Just because. There we go. And so I've got a completely blank AutoCAD. And I'm going to download this template file. And just in my little download in Chrome, or you could go into your files and open it from there. What a template file does is it opens up a completely blank version of a drawing, but with some settings preloaded in. And those settings include our units, our layers, our drawing scale, um, and then also my dimension style should have been carried over, but if not, I can easily um, change that around. So I have here, we can see that there's several different kind of drawing tags and things that we can just copy and paste around our drawings. So you don't have to go through and draw in a north arrow or at draw in your elevation tags. You can just copy and paste these around your drawings. And then if you actually double click on them, they bring in this block editor thing in which we can change what the sheet number says. We can change what the view number says. We can add notes if we need to add notes. Um, same thing like with our drawing title is I can just take this, copy it onto a drawing. I can double click on it and I can change it to say floor plan. And now it would say floor plan and I can change the scale if I need to change the scale. 
So these are just some easy little references that you can just copy and paste a lot around your drawings to annotate everything a little bit easier. Um, we also have here just some previews of what our different types of layers look like, but you wouldn't be copying and pasting these around your drawing. Um, you would just, um, this is just kind of a little bit of a reference. The way you're going to look at your different layers is through your layer drop down up here, or if you're on a Mac, it'll be over here on the side. The tricky thing for students with Macs typically is that they forget to change the layer and instead they just change the properties of a particular line. And we'll see why we don't want to do that and how it could screw us over, particularly related to this layer called def, which is a def points layer in just a moment. Um, so I have here my different layers, if I click on right there where it says zero, I can choose between different layers here and they all have a different purpose. If I go into my layer properties and I'll just make this window a little larger so we can see my mouse is being incredibly sensitive today. What do I have it set at? I have it set how I normally do. I had it on 1600. Hmm. Not sure. Um, but we can see the layer name, the properties that are associated with it, and then just a little description of them. So our layer zero, we don't actually want to do any line work in layer zero. It's just the default layer AutoCAD comes with, and we are not allowed to get rid of it. So we we'll just leave it there. Um, things that we import in, so different blocks that we bring in will be brought in layer zero, and then we can change them. Our annotate one, which is this is the layer all of our different notes and text will be in. Our def points layer, which is just kind of like our construction lines. So anything in this layer does not print out. For our dimensions, for hatches that are patterns, and then for hatches that are solid fills. And so we can see that there's a slight difference between, whoops, I clicked on the color so it opened up the menu. There's that slight difference in color. And that is going to make a big difference when we go to print our drawings out. Because this will get printed black, this will get printed gray. And we don't want our walls to be filled solid black, we want them to get filled with a gray color. So our, for patterns and for solid fills, this is for me doing any annotations for things that might need to get changed. So this is a layer that if you send me your drawing, I might mark things up using this red line layer. For our title block on our sheets, for our viewports on our sheets, so this right here is another non-plotting layer, just like our def point one. And so in these two layers, anything we do in either of these won't print out. Um, so I can make different viewports on my sheets or in paper space and not have to worry about like a big ugly box in our drawing. Then we have our different line layers and these are just gonna reference different line weights. So this red one is gonna be our heaviest line, then, whoops, then our next heaviest, a medium line, another medium, kind of a lighter line, and then a very light line. Our dashed layer for drawing dashed lines, so we'll use that within like our foundation plan. Our grid layer to help show our symmetry, so this is our center line layer. For hidden lines, and then some other layers too, just for doing um, some line work and uh, guide line work. So all of things that wouldn't print out, we're not really going to use those. Those just came in from some stuff I preloaded into the template. And so we can kind of just ignore those. But that's just a very kind of brief description of what our different layers are. And we can just use this drop down to select different layers to do our lines stuff in. Or I believe on the Mac version, you double click on them in your little layer panel over here. 
to switch them around. But it has been maybe 10 years since I've looked at AutoCAD on a Mac, so I can't confirm that really for you, unfortunately. Um, so the other thing too within our template file is that our scale has already been preset um, for model space, but we can just click here and we can set it to a quarter inch equals a foot. That's just going to help our line weights or rather our line types show when we actually go draw them. And our dimension style should also be set as well. So if I type in the command dim sty, all one word, um, yes. So hopefully for you guys, it also says DJM 48. So that's just this dimension style that's been predefined for us, which if I go into the modify tab, we can see that it has our architectural ticks and the size of them already set. We've got the break size, we've got our jog height, we've got our text set to the correct size where we want it to be. We have our fit, our units set to architecture already. So a lot of things are then preset for us in a template file to make things a little bit easier. The other thing that's nice with templates that is preset is right down here, which this is what we call paper space. So I'm gonna pan over a little bit. And so we have a um, title block already set up for us in paper space with a viewport already set up that we can just kind of copy and paste along rather than having to draw that in individually for each one. Um, and so there's little text boxes here that you can just double click on type your major in up here. Um, really, I should change that from exercise C3, but we'll just leave it alone. That's not going to make that much of a difference to me. You can just put your last name and first name, the date that you're submitting it on, change the sheet number and the sheet title. We can change a lot of this stuff easily. And we do all of our work in model space because we have a viewport here into model space. And so I'll just show you if I draw a line right here, escape to end it, that line shows up here in this one as well. I know the yellow on white's a little harder to see, but anything I do in here, no matter where I do it, I can find it in this layout tab and just set my drawing up for printing. So I'm still just gonna do everything in my model space to get it all done. So first thing I'm actually gonna do is just do a save as with this drawing and name it so that this way I have a copy of it already named. Um, and it's also a good practice to just save your file periodically as you're working. So I'm just gonna click on the little save as icon or I can go to the big red A and click on save as. And I'm just going to name it Tech 1728-Miller DB, which I think I actually want it to be the underscore there, but whatever. Um, and then CAD exercise. Forgot how to spell exercise for a minute. Um, and like this could honestly be not the exact thing that I requested from you. I, I can't remember. Fortunately, as I get older, my memory is getting worse and worse. Um, but I'll just click on save. And this way too, if AutoCAD crashes, there's a good chance it'll save a recovery of it for me. And now from, from now on, I can just do Control S or Command S or just click on this save icon here. So if I do Control S, that's just the shortcut to quick save and it just overwrote whatever I had previously before. Um, but enough yapping, I'm gonna start drawing. So I'm gonna start with my floor plan and just lay everything out in my floor plan. And like I said too in the 
the title of this lecture is we're going to go over some of those modified tools too to help us make our drawing a little bit nicer and easier. Um, and I'm going to start with just the overall line weights or the overall dimensions of my building. And I'm actually going to open up my version here just so we can kind of reference it for it. So our building is overall 24 by 12, but we are measuring from the face of the stud to the face of the stud. So we can see here this 20 or this 12 or and this 24 dimension, they are not going from the very outside of the building. So this right here is the out very outside of my building. So from here to here, between these two is my siding. This is my plywood sheathing. This area is my two by six stud. And so when we're making that measurement, we're going from the face of the stud to the outside face of the stud. Um, if I took this dimension and I moved it over to be from the very outside of the building to the very outside of the building, we can see that it's not 24, it's 24 feet two and a half inches. And that's because it's accounting for the fact that I've got that half inch plywood on either side, which is adding an inch. And then I have the one by six siding. And because it's nominal dimension is one by six, it's actual thickness is three quarters of an inch. So then I've got three quarters of an inch on either side attached to it as well. So we're doing everything here using actual dimensions and we are thinking about every single material that is included within that wall. So it doesn't necessarily matter which layer we start in. So technically those stud lines are going to be in this line six layer, but you could actually draw it in any layer and then switch it over afterwards. So while I know that it's supposed to be in that line six layer, I'm actually going to start in line two just so I could show you that if you do something in the wrong layer, you don't have to delete it. You can just go and redo it. And I'm, I could either use the line tool, the polyline tool, the rectangle tool. I can use any of those to draw this out and I'll still get eventually the same result. So I personally would use the polyline or the rectangle tool for it just so I get one joined line, but I'm actually going to do it in I'll do an example with the line tool and an example with the rectangle tool, just so I can show you how you could switch it up if you've made an uh-oh. And so first I'll do it with a rectangle and I'll just click somewhere to start, doesn't really matter where, and I'm just gonna type 24 feet, hit tab, 12 feet, enter. And so with a rectangle then it's all just one piece, but I'll also just right here with the line tool, and just because I like things nice and lined up, I'm going to put it underneath here. I'll do 24 feet, 12 feet. And remember, you do have to type that foot amount in and then escape to end the command. Um, and so I have this as a rectangle where it's all one piece and this with its individual pieces using the line tool. Um, so if I did it in the wrong layer and I wanted to change it, it's okay. I can just click on it, come up to my drop down here and change its layer. What you don't wanna do because it's easy to mess things up is come over here to this properties and change the color here manually because you could think that you're setting it to the right color, but you're actually not. So you could think like, oh, well, she just wants it to be a gray color, but this gray number nine is not the same as the color that's actually assigned to it. Um, so you don't wanna just switch colors and line types over here. You wanna make sure that you're switching your layer up. And we will occasionally use this, particularly for these different types of lines. But like I said, we don't want to spend too much in changing the properties here. 
So then the other thing I wanted to show too is if you do this with lines and you realize that it would be easier to have them all as one, it'd be pretty easy to change them up. Now to show the thickness of my different materials, I'm gonna use the offset command, keyboard shortcut O, or what I used to call the funky looking thumb, cause it used to look like someone giving you a thumbs up, but the button doesn't look like that anymore. But it's right here. And with offset, nine times out of 10, I do this through option. So that way I could define it kind of as I go. So I'm just gonna hit enter to continue with through. And then I'm gonna click on my wall. I'm gonna go in 5.5 because my wall stud is five and a half inches thick. Then I'm gonna go in another half inch for my gypsum wall board. Then I'm gonna go out a half inch for my plywood and I'll just zoom in a little more and I'm gonna come out another three quarters of an inch. I could type these in as fractions, but I guess since I come from more of a industrial mechanical engineering product design standpoint, I like, I like decimals. So I'm gonna go out another three quarters of an inch. And I now have all of my walls, um, or all of the different layers of my walls framed out. Without having everything as one piece, like I do here with the rectangle tool, I can still do that, but then I have to bring this one in, five and a half, bring this one in, five and a half, bring this one in, five and a half, pan myself down a little bit and then bring it in a half inch, bring it in a half inch. And so this is just a little bit more tedious. And then even more when I bring things out, I'll have to extend lines out to go meet each other. This is not necessarily incorrect by any means. I'll click on that line and bring it out 0.75. Bring this one out 0.75. Bring this one out 0 0.75. 0.75. So like I'm getting the same result, but I just had to do the offset command so many more times. Now I'll have to click on these grips. And if I hover over that one, I can bring it to meet, bring this one to meet, take this one out, hover over that, bring it to meet, bring it to meet. And then I could either use these grips to cut these down or I could use the trim tool. So trims up here or keyboard shortcut TR where I could cut these lines down, but this is just giving myself extra work to get the same end result that this gave me automatically. And so now let me just undo a trillion times. Oops, a little too much. So control Y brings your stuff back if that helps. So control Z undo, is undo and control Y is redo. If you go too far. Um, so if you have things as separate lines and you wanna join them as one piece, that is the command J. And what I usually do is select my object first, then J, enter, and now it's all one piece versus the fact that it was separate pieces. So you can just join things together to help make it a little easier if you didn't have it to begin with. And so again, for the offset command, it's up here or keyboard shortcut O. I like to just leave it as through, so I'll hit enter or I can click on the through option here and then I'll bring it in 5.5 bring it in 0.5, bring it out 0.5, and 
and out again 0.75. And then I want all of these lines to be in the line six layer so that they're that lighter gray color. And now I've got my walls framed out and I can start adding in these spaces for the openings in the doors and windows. What I'm actually gonna do before I do that is I'm going to copy this so that way I can use it as a quick reference for my foundation plan because my foundation plan isn't going to have any openings for the wall for the excuse me for the doors and the windows but it is still going to have that 24 by 12 so let me just switch my layer over to this dim one I'm just going to add in they mentioned here that says this is uh, 24 that way I don't forget to do that um, and so that way I can just kind of have that as a quick little reference to make my foundation plan before I start adding in those so I'm just gonna highlight the whole thing and remember if you click and release so if you don't hold your mouse or your trackpad down you don't get this weird lasso I'm not a fan of the lasso I just like to click and release and just go around the whole object. And then to make a copy of it, it's either keyboard shortcut C O or this button right here. And then it wants me to specify the base point. So just pick a point to grab it by. And I like to keep all of my drawings aligned with each other. So I'm just gonna go up quite a bit and make just a copy of this to reference for my foundation plan later. So I'm gonna actually take this line here and I'm gonna switch its layer over to the hidden one. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, and do another offset this time, I'll, instead of keeping it through, I'm just going to make it 8, enter, and just bring it in 8 inches. And now I have my foundation wall, and I'm just going to switch the layer over to the yellow one. So the reason why I kept this is this is representing that exterior siding that is above my line of sight. Um, and those were just some lines that I forgot to finish off in here, so I have them here. And it's frustrating to me, and I don't understand why, um, because the actual dimensions of a CMU are seven and five eighths, but for some reason, when we draw foundation plans, we show them as eight inches. I don't know why, I don't understand why, but by golly, I just follow the rules that I was told. Um, so that's why I drew my foundation wall as eight instead of um, seven and five eighths. And so now I have my foundation plan set up. I'll get to adding in like things like the floor joist um, and the hatches. I'll probably get to those later, um, but I want to finish kind of setting up the floor plan right now. So with my floor plan, I'm going to switch myself over to this def points layer to add in lots of guidelines. Um, one thing students in the past have told me that they don't like about the def points layer is that it's really hard to see because it's this black line on a black screen. And so that's difficult to kind of notice. Um, and if you do not like the fact that, I personally like the fact that it's difficult to notice because I want it to kind of be out of my field of vision when I'm thinking about my drawing. But if you don't like the color that it's set at, you can absolutely go into your layer properties and you can change its color. So like you can make it, I would make it a color that nothing else in your drawing is. So if you make it like, I'll make it like this peach color and now it's this peachy color. So that way at least I still know that it's, that it's a deaf point and that it's not anything that's going to print out. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to add in 
different guidelines to my drawing, but anything I do in this Anno Def layer doesn't print, which is ultimately what I want. And so I'm going to go into the line tool and I'm going to measure from the face of stud, which is right here, because this is the face of my sheathing, this is the face of my siding. From the face of stud, I'm going to go in four feet, enter, and just make a big guideline up. And then that's going to be the cutout for, or the start for my door and my window. And I'll go into the offset command. And because I did my foundation wall at eight inches, if I hit enter right now, it's going to assume I want to do eight inches. And so I could either type in one foot six, enter, or I could switch myself over to through. So I'll do this one foot six, enter, and then I'll bring it over on this side, bring it over on this side, and then I can take these guides that I made and delete them. I technically don't have to delete them, but I like to try to leave the def points out of my drawing as well. Um, I need to make sure these are going all the way down. And so there's several ways I could do that. I could click on them and I could just stretch that grip to go further down. Or I could use the extend command, which is keyboard shortcut EX. Or if I click on this little drop down next to trim, it's right here. And now we can see that the trim command went bye bye and now it says extend but I can always just switch it back to trim. It's just gonna say whichever one you used last. And so what the extend command does is it takes a line and brings it to the next um, line segment or feature that it finds. And so we can just make that line a little bit longer that way. Personally, I don't do that too much. I usually just use grips. And now I'm gonna use the trim command, so TR, enter and I'll just either click on the lines I want to get rid of or if I click down here in kind of this emptiness I could click and just move my mouse to just cut all of that open at once cut these away cut these away and now I have the openings for my doors and windows or my door and window and I'm just going to switch the layer over to the Anno2 line one. So again, I'm just gonna do the same process then for the window here and here and the window bank here. So I'm gonna switch my layer. Actually, no, I'm not because I'm still in def points. I'll go into the line tool and I'm gonna do it from the face of stud down four feet all the way through, offset. This time I'll do a through offset, or actually I'll just leave it set at this one foot six because that's what I want anyway. So I'll just hit enter. Up, down, and then I'll just bring this super far because if I'm gonna trim it away, who cares? And then I'll do another line from the face of stud over six feet, enter, up, escape. This time I'll bring the line down already so that way I don't have to change two of them. And this time when I go into offset, I'm gonna use the through option. So T, enter, and I'm gonna go three inches, three inches, three feet, enter, three feet, enter. Escape, and then I'll go into the trim command, which up here, or TR, and I'll just clear it out.
whoops, PR, enter, because I also wanted to get rid of these guys. Well, actually, I should have kept this. Hold on. So let me control Z. I'm going to keep that there so I can use it for the door once I have the door in. And remember, too, you can just click over here and just slice your way through a lot of things all at once. And I'll just click on my edges. See, this, for me personally, I like having it as that black one because it's very obvious then if it's, um, if you haven't changed it from what it needs to be. Um, and technically, too, like this little nugget of a line here, this can stay in my drawing because it's not going to print out. So I don't have to delete this line here or this one here. I'm going to, just because I'm kind of a little bit um, particular like that, but I wouldn't have to technically to do so. They can stay in my drawing and there's really no issue with it. Now I'm going to add in that interior partition. So I'll make another line from either one of these sides twelve feet straight down offset and I'm gonna leave it set as through and then what I've got to do is I've got to go half the stud width on each side so half the stud width on this side and this side and then gypsum wallboard gypsum wallboard. So this is made out of a two by four, which is three and a half and three and a half then divided by two would be 1.25 on each side or one and a quarter. So I'm just going to go towards the right one and a quarter right? No, I'm doing that wrong. It's one and three quarters. Let me break out a calculator just because I'm kind of dumb sometimes. One and three quarters. Yeah, whoopsie, that was stupid. So offset. I'm going to leave my distance set as through. So I'll just hit enter. On one side, 1.75. 1.75 and then 0.5 for gypsum wallboard, 0.5 from gypsum wallboard. And then I'll use the trim tool to cut everything to meet nice and easy. Um, boop. Okay, just slice through that opening for my door, which, and now I can get rid of these ones. I could have gotten rid of them before and just drawn that in myself, but I don't want to draw the same line twice. And you can also use the trim tool to just like erase lines entirely. So like this middle line, I don't need it. I could just use the trim tool to erase it. Or I could just use delete to erase it. And then switch in my layers around. So I'm just going to highlight all of it and switch all of it to layer two and then switch these ones individually to layer six. Why? Just because I felt like it. Or I could go and individually click on the lines I want to change around and switch them. Now, a good way too to check that you have things in the right layers 
is to, and I know I still need to change these, is to use these little light bolts next to it. So if I turn that, I can easily just turn layers on and off just to kind of see if I have things set the way I need to or want to, which is really helpful when you have lots of annotations and dimensions in your drawing. You can just kind of turn the dimensions off temporarily without deleting any of the work that you did. And switch those to layer two. And then I'll switch myself over to the hidden layer. And I'm just going to draw lines here. And if I hit enter again, it's just going to bring me back into the last command I ever used, which was line. And another line there, escape. Rather than delete this line, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer on each side and switch its layer over to grid. So that way I can use it for that symmetry line throughout the whole thing, or I could draw it in again. Um, another way I could have done this partition is before I added in this window, I could have just measured directly to the midpoint. And so I'll show here if I have a line that's going just all the way through. and I go to draw another line, I can just shift right click and say, show me the middle and it'll automatically snap to, or it'll show me the snap point for the middle of it. Um, the reason why I couldn't do it the way I worked through was because I had already put this window here. And so then the middle of this had shifted to over here and the middle of this one had shifted and so on and so on. Um, so, because I put that window in first, that's why I couldn't just go directly to the middle of the whole building. But either way, if I put the wall in first, I then I would have just gotten the same result I got here. So I'm actually going to hold off on adding in the windows and doors until the lecture about um, blocks and reusable content because I can show you how we can download those and make them a little bit easier. So I'm just going to leave them as openings for now. I'll control S to save my progress so that this way I haven't lost it. And then we can add in, we'll add in the uh, little staircase here. And then we can move on to working on the elevation, which we can also then take the elevation and make it into the section view. So I want to hold off also on doing the section view just because, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, I do have a little shortcut that can help you make the section a little bit easier. So yeah, we'll add in the stairs and then we'll do the elevations. Um, All right, so for the porch, if we look at it, um, we have our six foot wide porch centered on our door. Um, it's four foot deep and each step is 12 or one foot. We'll notice here that they're labeled as 11 inches and that's to do with what's called um, like the toe height or the fact that if you've, if you've seen concrete steps, so Concrete steps elevation. Want to show us? Hopefully, we can see a good uh, picture of one. Not too great for concrete steps toe height. Maybe that will help show us a little bit more. Um. What, I, what I'm trying to get across is the fact that the steps themselves, they actually kind of curve inward or have a slant a little bit in. And that's what that dotted line is referring to. So it is 12 inches from here to here, um, but then between these two parts from here to here is the 11. 
Um, so I'll actually just in my death points layer, I'm going to draw a line straight across from here, just as a nice little reference for the middle. And then I'll go back into the line tool so I can either click on the button or L, enter. And if I hold shift and right click, I get my little menu for snap points. And I'll say I want the middle. And then I'll go from my midpoint down four feet. Right, it's four feet. I'm not going crazy, right? No, it's four feet. Um, and then I'll use my offset tool and I could set this to three feet, but I really just like doing through. So I'm just going to hit enter and I'll say, I want to go three feet this way. I'll throw it up and I'll type in 36 and three feet this way. I'll delete that and draw a line across and I'll take all three of these and switch their layer over to line four and then I'm going to use the offset command again leave it set as through where I'll go 11 inches down 11 inches down and then I'll go one inch up one inch up, one inch up. I'll click on the line and I can either use the extend tool or I can just hold on to the grip and just stretch it down. Hold on to the grip and stretch it down. And then I'm gonna click on these three lines here and I'll switch them over to line six, but still I need them to be those hidden lines, which they aren't. So this is a case in which I can come over here to my properties and change them to hidden. Still, I want them to be a little bit smaller than what they currently are showing at. So I need to change the line scale. The issue is, well, actually, no, that's because I'm just looking at this in a half inch. If I do a quarter inch and then I type in regen, they'll be the right size. So never mind. But if I did need to change just one particular line's scale, what I could do is if I click on it, right click, and then go into the properties bar, I can change the line type scale for just this line. So if I type in 0.5, it would make that one line smaller, but it would leave the rest of my lines alone. Um, Sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes we do need to change just one particular line type or one particular area. But my problem would be is that if I just use the command LT scale, and then I did a line type scale of 0.5, it changes everything. And oftentimes I don't want to change all of them. I just want to change one particular line. So let me control Z to undo that. Um, and so that then is to click on something, right click and open up the properties bar. It usually opens up kind of floating up here. I will often just have it dragged onto the side and I like to keep it open a lot when I'm drawing, um, but you don't have to have yours open. For those of you who are on a Mac, it should be here by default, just kind of underneath your layers are all of your properties and stuff. Um, and you can actually change layers through there as well. So I could change my layer for this line that I have selected. I could change it from that to be into a different line type or a different layer altogether. And I'm just going to change this line type scale back to zero and work with it from there. So now that I've got my floor plan set up, I'm going to start working on my elevation view. So for my elevation, I'm going to want to borrow measurements from my floor plan to help make it a little bit easier. And so I'm going to use the ray tool, or I could use construction lines, or I could use the line tool. Like I've said before, 
there are lots of ways to get something done in AutoCAD, so you don't have to do it exactly the way that I do. Um, but I want to make sure I'm in that death point layer just so these lines don't uh, print out if I forget to delete them. And I'll go into my draw options and then ray is right here. And I'm just going to draw it from this point straight down. Enter to end the command. Enter again to go right back in it. Straight down from the edge of my window. Enter to end the command. Enter to get back in. And so what this is doing, enter, enter, is just giving me reference points, really long, endless guidelines from there to help me reference for my side view or my elevation without having to measure any of this or draw it out. And I'll go from here, from here. And so again, after you end a command, just hitting enter brings you right back into the same one. So I can just kind of double hit enter to get out and back in really easily. And so now I've got all of these guidelines projected for my side view. I can switch my layer over to this green one, layer three, because that's correct, the one I want to be in, yes. And I'm just going to draw a line. I'll hover over there and I'll just start it down here that goes straight across. So that'll then be the bottom of my floor. And then I'm going to offset, enter for through, and I'm just going to go up eight inches for the top of my floor. Up another two feet for the bottom of my windows and up another six foot eight. So make sure you're putting that apostrophe in there for my, um, the top of my windows and my door height, and then up another eight foot, one and a half inches for the top of my walls here. And the reason why I have to add that one and a half is for the fact where we can see it over here a little easier is for this double um, top plate. So this right here is eight feet and then we add have to add that extra one and a half for the double top plate. Now let me just use the trim tool to cut all that away or actually I'm going to control Z. I'm going to Cut all that away. Cut all these up. And I'm leaving this up here because I can just use the delete key to get rid of it. Get rid of these. Get rid of this. And just like with the floor plan. I'm going to leave my windows as just kind of the rough openings for now. Same thing with my door. And then I can just highlight the things I want to get rid of and use the delete key on my keyboard. Which, whoops, I will have to trim these guys down. And then just highlight all of this to get rid of it. Um, Sometimes I just don't like using trim when it comes to like rays or construction lines because I might accidentally leave a piece up here. Because I was in the def point layer, it wouldn't matter if I accidentally left a piece up there, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I can see there's a couple of things I forgot to trim too. So I can either just play around with the grips to pull them over or I could go back into the tool and just cut them out. And now 
I'll just switch my layers around. Right here, I want this to be in my layer five, the magenta one, with a dashed line type, I'm 99% sure. Let me just double check again. Nope, I want it hidden. And I can click on here and I can just check. Not that you have my, my finalized file. So that's the top of my floor. Um, this is my ceiling height, so I'll switch that as well. Whoops, I don't want to change the color. I want to change its line type. For my slope, I have a couple of different ways I could draw it. And we I showed you this in that practice file where I have a slope of um, 3 over 12. And so I could go up 3 feet over 12 feet up three feet over 12 feet whoops not 12 inches over 12 feet up three feet over 12 feet and then just connect the dots the reason why I want this extra little space is because remember that our building itself is not 24 feet wide from here to here. So if I go and place a dimension along this, we can see that it's that 24 and two and a half, which is another reason why I just projected those guidelines down rather than trying to draw this out. So that this way I could just get that easy reference for it without having to take any of those measurements. But that's why I made that go a little bit further. Because if I just went over 24 feet, my line would have ended right here, which is not what I wanted it to do. And then I'll just take this grip and pull it up. And use the trim tool to cut it down. And then I'm just going to highlight these guys. And you can also click directly on them and use the delete key to get rid of them. I'll get rid of that dimension too. Uh, so for my windows and stuff, I'm going to switch them over now, which also we can see here that now it's not saying any layer. And that's just because I have multiple things selected that are in multiple layers. So it can't tell me what layer I currently have selected because I've got too many things selected. Um, some of them are in the def point layer. Some of them are in layer three, whichever one the green one is. I didn't memorize the numbers. And I'll just switch them over to layer four, that blue one. And then I can start adding in for my roof line and my overall roof thickness, which we'll just double check in the instructions that the roof itself has. So the roof has several materials. You're only going to show these materials in section. We're not going to show them in the elevation. So it has a total thickness of 10 inches. And so I'll go into the offset tool and I'll leave it set as through. And this way too, it'll be nice and parallel with it. 10, not feet, so just 10. And then I could either draw lines up. I could use the extend tool or I could click on my grips and draw them up. So I'm just gonna make this grip go extra far and then I'll use the extend tool. So EX, enter, or you can click it from the dynamic menu and just bring it to meet there. And then I'll go into trim, TR, enter, click on my line, click on my line, switch this layer over to layer four.
Now, do I want to add my hatch in yet? Do I want to add my hatch in? I'm going to save the hatch for after I show you how blocks work. Um, just because that three feet, so that three feet is not including the trim on all of this. That three foot is the rough opening of our doors and windows, which means that our hatching is going to go around the trim as well. And so I just don't want to add that part in just yet. Um, but what we can do is finish off adding in the stairs here and then that little bit of exposed um, foundation as well as our ground line. So if this is the bottom of our floor, our foundation is we have six inches, so I could either do offset through or I could type in six, enter. We've got six inches of foundation that is exposed. And then this right here is the overall ground line. And I'm just going to extend it out a little bit, little ways in each direction. There is really no specific number of how far I need to bring that out in each way. And I'm just going to switch it over to line one. So that way it is that red color, which will get identified to print as um, extra thick in our drawings. And then I'll bring my line work in a little bit for my uh for my foundation wall because once again this is accounting for my siding and then my plywood sheathing and then my foundation wall sits right on the edge of the stud so what i could do is i could do this two ways i could either do the math in my head that if this is three quarters and this is half an inch that comes down to an inch and a quarter let me double check that because you guys saw how bad I am at math. <laughs> and see, I'm even typing the wrong thing in. Yeah, an inch and a quarter. Or I could draw a guideline straight down. So I could use the ray tool. I could use the construction line tool. I could draw a guideline straight down from there. And that'll show me exactly where it would be. Um, I'm just going to go into the line tool. I'm going to switch myself over to the def points and that's just because I do not like having overlapping lines even if they're the same layer. Um, so that way I can just see the difference and I'm going to go in 1.25 straight down. Take that little guy and delete him. And then switch this one over to the green layer or layer three. And I could also do the same thing on the other side or just to go over some of those modify tools some more. I could do a mirror. So I could, while I already have it selected, I can say mirror or keyboard shortcut MI. And it wants to know where I want my mirror line to be. So I'm just gonna shift right click and say I want it on the midpoint, and I really could do the midpoint of any of these. And just flip it. So now that it has me drawing the second point, I'll just go straight up. And now it's asking, do I want to erase the original? And so I'm going to say no. And then I've got that little inch in. And I'll use the trim tool just to cut this piece separate just so I can assign them different layers. There is, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, there is a modify tool to cut a line into parts, into like two different segments. but I could be, so breaks at a point. Yeah, I guess that's what I want. So yeah, I could use that to cut it into different segments. So I could say that I wanted to take this line here that I have selected and break it here. And now it's one line, two lines. Um, as you could see by how long it took me to find where that tool was, it's not something that I do very often because I don't find it difficult to just take a line and draw it in. Um, so that way I could give them different 
line types. So I don't want it in this anno title block. Technically, it would not ruin anything in my drawing. So things would be okay if I was in this layer by accident. But it's always just double check which layer that you that you're in and that you define for them. And I'll take my little lines here for my stairs and I'll bring them down a bit. And now we've got to split our stairs evenly into those three sections. So if you remember from when we were doing hand drawings, I did like some mathematics, some wonderful math to figure out the height of each three of these steps. And so we can see here from our measurement that it is one foot two inches from the top of the floor to where the steps end. And so, which, whoops, yeah, oh, sorry. Let me trim this line out first too. So I'll go TR, enter, and I'll just cut this line so that way my steps are just kind of a clear space. I'll switch them over to, I believe I want them in that yellow layer, if I'm correct, or in the green one, yeah. And the reason they're in the yellow layer is because technically they're further out, they're closer to us, the person viewing this drawing, than what this is, and that's why we have them with that thicker line. And I'll switch myself over to the yellow layer some more, or line two. And that way I could just offset that down. I could also do an array. Um, in this scenario, I would think honestly doing an array here would be overkill. But to show you how the array tool works, you click on the object you want to make copies of. And there are several different types of arrays. So you can do a rectangular array, a path, a polar. So this just makes kind of a grid of objects. This makes copies of an object along a specific path, and this makes copies around a circle. Um, so I could do a rectangular array, and then it gives me um, four columns and three rows of lines. And so I could say I only want one column, but I still would want three rows. And then I would say that I want the total distance that they span to be negative one foot two. That way they go down and it would split it up. So actually, I guess I would want four. So I'll say I want four rows. Four rows. Nope, four, negative one foot two. And it will split it up evenly for me, so it automatically gave me just an even amount for each one of them. Or I could do the math and I could say, okay, well, if it's one foot two and I'm splitting that into three even sections, I X out of the calculator. So that's 14 divided by three, which gives us four with a repeating six. So I could have either done it Either way, um, the thing to keep in mind with arrays is that everything in them is connected to each other. So if I hit escape to exit it, when I go back in, it just brings me right back into this array editor thing where I can change how many columns, this amount of space between, the amount total. The only way to get them separate from each other is to do an explode. And so that is this button up here or keyboard shortcut X. And it's just, I click on the object. Well, actually in this case, I'd have to go into the command first, click on the object, enter. And now these are separate lines rather than all being one continuous line. But if I didn't want to do it that way, I could just do the math figure out that it's four and 11 sixteenths. Then I could type that in by four dash 11 slash 16, enter. And then just say, I want it to go on this side. I want it to go on this side. 
and then just switch their layer over. And then like I said, I'm gonna keep these empty for now. I'm gonna keep the hatch empty as well, just so we can add that in later. And then I'll work on doing my elevation over here, my other elevation. And I can also take this, so I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. I'm gonna copy it, just make a copy of it down here, because I can use this as a big guideline for my section view when I do my section, because my section is gonna have this exact same outline here. It's gonna have the floor start in the same spot. I'm gonna have windows in my wall that are gonna have the same height, so I can use a lot of this as just reference for when I'm making my section view, like I'm not gonna have these stairs here at all. But if I already took the time to make all of this line work, why would I wanna measure it out and make it again? So I'm just gonna make that copy, leave it there for the section view. And then I'm going to highlight my floor plan, make a copy of it over here. And then I'm gonna highlight it again and rotate it around really any point. It doesn't matter, I just want it to be standing up this way. So that way I'm looking at this west side. And then I'll, I'm just gonna move it over. So I'm highlighting it one more time and going into move, enter, select a place to grab it by. And so that this way, again, I don't have to take any measurements for my side view. I can just throw guidelines down from here to help me out. And so I'm gonna switch back over to my def point layer. And I can either go into the word draw for my rays, or I can just type in ray, enter, and I can bring some of my height measurements over. And so remember, I'm just kind of shortcutting my way through by just hitting enter to end the command, hitting enter again to get right back into the last command I ever used. Enter, enter. And I'll even do from like the, whoops, I did not do that straight, so I'll control Z, which, and I'll go back into Ray. So this is also a good learning moment because the very last thing I did was an undo. If I hit enter again, it's just gonna keep assuming that I wanna undo things because the last command I technically did was undo, not Ray. So sometimes that enter, enter shortcut can get you. Um, but I'll just do from the top of the doors, from the bottom of the windows, top of the floor, the bottom of the floor, and I'll leave the ground line alone for now. Um, and I could even do the same thing with like the stairs, but I'll do the stairs a little bit later. And then and let me just zoom in to make sure I got the outside. Yep, straight from that outside, straight from the edge of the window, enter, enter, straight from the outside, enter. And now I'll use the trim tool to cut this up into my side view. So with the west side, because we're starting with the lower part of the wall and then moving up to the taller part, whoops, which I actually messed up a little bit with the roof so I can just go and reference it again. And then trim some more here and here. And then I'm just gonna click on these guys and delete them. Um, so it's different than the hand drawing that we did because on the hand drawing we were on this taller side. In this scenario we're on this um, smaller side watching it slope upward. So I'm actually going to go into the line tool and if I just hover over this point it shows me where it would overlap and it'll show me the intersection and I can just draw a line across here for my side view. And I've got a lot of my measurements, a lot of my references just done for me already without having to put a whole lot of work 
into it, which I don't know about you, but that's how I prefer. I would prefer to not have to do as much work. Um, now it's just a game of changing my line types or my layers. And so I'll switch this over to be my ground line. I'll switch this one over to be, is this the top of my floor or the bottom of my floor? Or actually, no, this isn't even my ground line. Whoops, let me control Z to make it. So this is the bottom of my floor, which I'm gonna do in that blue layer, layer four. The top of my floor, which I'll make layer five. And then I'm gonna change its line type to be hidden. My window, which I'll highlight the whole thing and change to be line four. This will be actually in the blue layer because even though it's showing up as this dash line here, this is like the bottom part of my roof and this will be the top. And let me just double check that I'm not saying the wrong thing. I'm saying the wrong thing. See, look how dumb I can be sometimes. So I also want this one to change to layer five and hidden. And I'll make this line layer three. These lines also layer three. And this should be layer four. And I think these also should be layer four. So yeah, we can try that break tool here. How much time have I been going for? 131, okay, good, I've got time. Whoops, whoops, ignore that. Um, so I'll use that break tool that I said I rarely use. So I'll, if I click on the word modify, we have break at a point. And I could say, I wanna take this line and I wanna break it right here. And now it's one line and another one. And I'll switch that over to layer four. And the reason why this is turning into this different layer, this layer four, and this is layer three, is because the roof is sloping away from us. And so if I, once again, am standing here, this is getting further away from me. And we'd show that with lighter line weights in our drawing, that this right here, this point is further away. It's 24 feet further away than this is. And so you could either use that break tool or you can make this line tinier and then go into your lines and L, enter, draw another one here. Either way, I'll get a similar end result or the exact same end result, really. I'll switch my layer over to layer one so I can draw the ground line in. And I'll go into the line tool, L, enter. And I'm just gonna hover over that point without clicking. So that way I can just reference it. And I'll switch my layer over to line three. And I'll go into the line tool again. And I'm just gonna go in 1.25, enter down to meet it, escape, back into the line tool. So since the last thing I did was line, I could just hit enter, or I could go click on the button, or I could type L enter. All of them are gonna get me the same end result. Or I could have done a mirror for this. I could have just mirrored it across lots of different ways do whichever way works best for you. If you find yourself just drawing lots of little lines, that is fine. Do that up. As long as you're getting the end result I get, that's what matters really in the end. So now I'll work on adding in my stairs over here. Like I said, I'm gonna leave all my hatches for the next part of the assignment. And then I'll end this recording. 
So I'll switch my layer over to this death points one. And by also by no means do you have to do things with rays and construction lines. So if you just want to draw lines all the way out, go for it. You can just draw a big old guideline out there, a big old guideline out from here, a big old guideline out from here. Like that could be what you do. And if that's what works for you, whoops, control Z to undo that, then do it that way. Please, please, please. And then I just, I don't know, I'm not crazy about doing it that way. I like using rays because I remember to delete them more often. <laughs> and so then I'm going to go into the ray tool and I'm going to go straight down from here. And this will now help me make my stairs. So I'm gonna go into the trim tool. So I just go trim and cut out my steps, which whoops, my little cursor thing is kind of in the way. The thing that makes my cursor easier to see. Ironic, isn't it? That it's in the way. Um, I'm gonna leave them as just these boxy steps for the current moment. And then just take all of these guides I have. And whoops, I still need to trim a little bit for that one. And I'm just clicking on them and hitting delete. Or I could right click, erase, whatever way works for you, by golly, do it. And trim, okay. And now I'm going to do some more rays from these ones here. So enter, 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 click on it, place it, enter, enter. Which, whoops, it seems like that's where I did one of them too already. So let me go back into the ray tool. And what that is doing is it's just giving me the angle that I need to come back on. And so if I click on here to start it, hover over, where does it meet? Top point. In this case, I don't need to hover over because I can just click directly on it. And this one, I actually need to bring this out a little bit further. Click to where it would meet. And now I'll delete these lines. Because we do want our stairs to have just that little bit of slope to them for the toe height. I mean, I certainly wouldn't fail you if you didn't if you didn't have that in there, but just a little extra details to really perfect the drawing can make that much of a difference for it. Now, like I said, with that, and I can also take this now and just delete it because I have all those references for it. Um. I'm not going to gut this for my section view just yet. I'll just leave it there as a little reference for my section view. Um, should I add in my floor joist too before I have? I've got time. I've got time to add in my floor joist for my foundation. So we'll do that. And we can even maybe hatch the foundation too. Which, oh, and we can even copy this over from our floor plan. We can do so many things for our foundation. We're not done yet. want to see how much I can get done within the one time. So like for my foundation, for the stairs, I can just take this from right here and use the copy tool. So CO, enter. And I'm just going to grab it from this endpoint. And because I copied my foundation to be perfectly in line, I can just also make it so that I know exactly where it is and that it's in the right spot. Um, in our foundation, we're not really concerned too much with that toe height thing. 
So I'm just going to delete these lines, hover over, or rather click on all of the line work, and change it to the hidden line one. And then I also want to add in my footing. And so there's several ways I could get my footing done. And so my footing itself is two feet wide. And it's centered on this foundation wall. So if it's centered on it, that means that four inches of that two feet is already taken care of right here. And then the other four inches is taken care of here, which means there is uh, 16 inches then that I have to accommodate for on either side or eight inches in, eight inches out. And so I'm going to go into my offset tool again, my favorite command. I'm going to use the through option and I'm just going to go in eight out eight. And I'm going to click on these two and I'm going to switch myself over to the dashed layer. And so I've got it at, well, now I'm in the deaf point layer, so the dimensions are a little hard to see, but I've got my two foot wide footing going around my eight inch foundation wall. How wonderful, how great. And I'm gonna switch myself over to line three and we'll start working on my floor joist. So that is what these lines here are representing. Our floor joist going all the way across and they are spaced 16 on center. So if I go into the dimension tool and I click on one and then the other, we can see that they're one foot four or 16 inches apart. All the way through, even right here, from here to not that one, that one is 16. And then this is just the girder going down the, the center. Um, and so the space between these two is just the thickness of a two by eight. So the thickness here is just that one and a half because we're doing everything with actual dimensions. So what I recommend to do is to start off with just one singular line here. And then you can either use offset or array to just push it all the way across. So I could use offset and I could set it directly to um, 16, enter, and say I want to go here, which here, here, and just keep pushing it all the way across. Click on one, click on the next one, click on one, click on the next one. One way to do it. Totally viable way, totally fair, nothing incorrect about doing it this way. If anyone tells you it's wrong, you tell them to shut their stupid face because there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> um, or the other way you can do it is to take your individual line and do a rectangular array. And this time we want just one row for our space in between we want 16 and instead of four we want let's try 20. see the thing is you can only type in one of these or the other so i could say that in total i want to go 24 feet and then it'll change the space between automatically um, so you can only, you can define the columns in the space between or how many columns you want in, in total. Um, so I'm going to switch that again to 16 and then I guess I just want 19 total. You just kind of keep playing around with that number and just click it in between until you get the end result you want, which I did. Yay. It closed. And remember that if you want to separate these guys, 
you click on it, or rather you go into the explode command. So that's X, enter, click on it, enter, and now they're all separate pieces. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of them on those ends purely because you wouldn't be able to see them anyway. Um, because these, this yellow line here, this solid yellow line is going to get printed with a thicker line weight, which would take precedence over these center lines. And then I'm just going to window around a bunch of them and switch their line type to center. And then I'll take the one in the middle, which is that the middle one, right? I think that's the middle one. Pretty sure it's the middle one. And I'll offset it. So I'll just leave it at through, enter, one and a half, one and a half. And then this right here is representing just our blocking going across, um, which they also are, let me just double check, spaced. So they're spaced with a three inch difference to them. Um, so right down, if I was to draw a line right down the middle, so I'll shift right click midpoint, it would be directly in the center of the two of them. So what I can do is draw a line. And actually I have the midpoint snap already on, which is weird, I typically don't. So that's weird, but I'll go into the line tool and I'll shift right click midpoint and I'll get a line that goes right down the center of this whole thing. And then I'll go into offset and I'll leave it set it through. So I'll just hit enter and I'm going to go up 1.5, click on that middle line down 1.5 get rid of the middle one and I actually should have made this go all the way to the edge but it's okay because I just did I just fixed my uh-oh and then I'll go into the trim tool and I'll cut out this part this part uh, this part this part and it's not necessarily matter if you start up or on the upper one or the lower one, like that's not going to make um, a difference. There isn't anything construction wise that's going to um, fall apart because you chose the lower one first. And I'm just clicking to trim and voila. If it bugs you that um, with these, these lines and the other one, like how the dash line is kind of almost overpowering these ones, you can click on them, right click, draw order, bring to front, and they should then show up on top of the other ones. So let me try regen, which is, yeah, there we go. Regen is like the refresh command. And that way they kind of show up a little bit more. Like I had mentioned, when it comes to printing your drawing, that won't make a difference. But I can understand the little bit of frustration. Okay. And with that, ooh, I really should have patched this beforehand. Oop, I can show you a little secret for that too. Um, when I join you guys next week. So for this week... I'm giving you guys a little bit of a break. You can either choose to take that break to just continue working on this project because I can imagine, um, hopefully you are a little bit slower at working with CAD than I am. I know I am kind of going through this fast, but that's just because I know you can pause me and this way I could get through more stuff and I can help walk you through more details than I typically could. Um, but hopefully I am working a bit faster than you. I have been working with in AutoCAD for 17 years of my life, which it's kind of sad and scary to think about it that way. But um, 
I, I should be working faster than you and I should know a little bit more than you. And one day you will know just as much as me, I can promise. I, I can't promise, but if you were if you try if you spend 17 years in it, I guess you will you'll be as good as me. Um and so with that, you're not gonna have another lecture or assignment for this week. You can use that time to just maybe take a break or a breather, take a nap, call your mom, or you could use that time to just get get ahead on this project. Um, and with that, I will see you guys next week or in office hours. Email me anytime you may need help and have a good one.